Today I'm going to introduce some basic FPGA design concepts. This is a part of the DPC++ tutorial series. We'll look at uh, quickly the FPGA architecture, how is it different from other process architectures. We're going to talk about some important concepts about FPGA hardware design. And then we're going to look at how to map source code to hardware data path. We will also look into uh, the scheduling on FPGA and how to map parallelism models to FPGA hardware. And at the end, uh, we will talk about different memory types. Here we just compare FPGA with the most commonly used CPU architecture. Different from CPUs, FPGA does not have a fixed data path. And that is why it's called field programmable. We will program the hardware resources on FPGA to fit your need. And you have a lot more to control on how your design is mapped. For example, you can have a different number of registers. You can have different uh, number of uh, computational logic, combinational logic, and how these uh, logics are connected through registers. Functions that you want to implement are implemented as accelerators to offload intensive computing. We can use essentially two uh, main design methodologies. One is based on hardware description language, such as VHDL and Verilog. The other approach is to use high-level languages, such as DPC++. Inside FPGA, we typically have uh, we can typically find these different components. Adaptive logic module. Adapt adaptive logic module is essentially the uh, implementation or the resources you can use to implement combinational logics and the register. RAM block are uh, uh, resources for storing data that you can access randomly. DSP blocks are built-in hardware specialized DSP uh, processing logics that can perform signal processing or floating operation very efficiently. And last but not least, uh, we have a lot of programmable routing switches and you can use them to connect different adaptive logic module, RAM blocks, or DSP blocks. So the picture here use the colors um, that um, picturize the available resources in FPGA. As you can see, there are different kinds of resources available, and they are located in different parts of the chip. And as a result, there's a need to uh, use programmable routing switches to connect them uh, by uh, passing signals to and from. And also, depending on how you uh, organize your resources, the uh, d um, different you may incur different uh, delays uh, from one point to another point, and that may affect the latency or uh, operating uh, that may affect latency or delay that may affect the latency of your circuit. In the next few slides, uh, we will quickly look at some of the um, commonly used design concepts. The maximum operation frequency, or Fmax, refers to the maximum clock frequency a digital circuit operates at. And this is the maximum rate at which the outputs or registers are updated. Uh, usually, this um, operation frequency or the clock speed is limited by the physical propagation delay. By the physical propagation delay, and this uh, signals propagation delay uh, ac signals uh, will propagate uh, across combinational logic between two consecutive register stages. And the propagation delay is a function of the complexity of the combinational logic. So if 
your combinational logic is complex, and uh, naturally the propagation delay will be longer. Critical path is the path with the most combinational logic elements. As a result, the delay incurred on the critical path will limit the speed of the entire circuit. Different from Fmax, latency measures how long it takes to complete one or more operations. We can use latency to refer a single the latency of a single operation within the circuit, or we can use latency to describe the uh, delay of the entire circuit. Latency can be measured in time in units of uh, milliseconds or microseconds or uh, more often uh, in cycles or clock cycles and using clock cycles to measure the latency is preferred because that can uh, essentially describe uh, how your inter internal design uh, is, um, is affecting uh, the uh, operation whereas in with the same circuit you can uh, drive clock at different speed as a result the latency can be different even though the design is the same in general we in general we um, in general our goal is to lower the latency because the shorter the latency uh, the um, better uh, in terms of decreasing um, and that that means the circuit can give you result in a shorter time however we need to be very careful uh, when pursuing the goal of lowering the latency because sometimes shorter latency uh, may decrease the f max so we will talk um, we will um, we will look at example shortly to describe uh, what we mean by by that So let's look at this design. Uh, on the top, we have a so-called unpipelined design. So in this design, we have two combinational logics, A and B. And because they're, they differ in complexity, so the delay of these two combinational logics is different. The delay on A is 5 nanosecond, and the delay on B is 15 nanosecond. The registers before A and the registers before B are the registers we can use to store a uh, result. And uh, in this case, the input of combination logic A comes from this first register. Once both combination logic finish their uh, computing, the result will be uh, updated to the following register at the next clock cycle. So if we uh, have such a design, we cannot update the registers uh, you know, in, a, in a rate that's shorter than 20 nanosecond. Because 20 nanosecond is how long it takes for both A and B to complete their computation. And that's why our F max will be 50 megahertz, because the, the shortest latency will be 20 nanosecond between this point and this point. And the latency in this design is to um, the latency in this design is two cycles because the first cycle is when we um, have the input um, a value ready in its register and the second cycle is uh, when we have the result uh, updated in the second register. In contrast, we now have a design we call pipeline design. The difference, as you can see, is to add a pipeline register in between logic A and B. So what we can do here is we will still use the first register as the input of the first combination logic, logic A. The result of the logic from logic A will be updated to the pipeline register in the next clock cycle. And once this register is updated, 
then the combination logic B can use this as an input, does its computation, and store the result into the uh, output register to in the next clock cycle. Now, if you look at this design, this combination logic A and B can operate at the same time, but on different data, with the help of this pipeline register. So for one, um, um, for one computation, for, one, for, for this design, we can essentially operate at a higher frequency because the, the delay of either this stage or this stage maximally is 15 nanoseconds. So we can update these registers every 15 nanoseconds as opposed to the 20 nanosecond in the first case. So in this way, we essentially increased Fmax from 50 megahertz to 66.7 megahertz because now we uh, shorten the delay of this each stage, we call the pipeline stages. But on the other hand, we uh, increased the delay from two cycles to three cycles because we now have a pipeline register and that has to be updated uh, using one clock cycle. Another metric that we often use is the throughput. Throughput is the rate at which data is processed. Usually, uh, the higher uh, Fmax, the higher throughput. We want to um, point out that throughput is not the direct inverse of delay. This is because uh, in our design, well, at least in the optimized de design, we would like to process data in parallel, or at least have some overlapping in the data processing. So the direct inverse of the delay is actually smaller than uh, what we actually can achieve on the throughput. Next, I will want to talk about data path and the control path. Data path is a chain of registers and combinational logic. Um, so that's essentially the main um, operational or computation um, uh, operation that's uh, performed within a circuit. Memory blocks on FPGA or even off-chip memory units are considered as outside of the data path. Control path is uh, the opposite of data path. So everything else outside the data path uh, or, uh, or memory blocks are control path. The definition of the control path is that the, the signals that we use to control the operation of the circuit. So these are the logics added to the circuit for uh, a few reasons. Uh, for example, for handshaking flow control, if there are a different number of uh, modules that you need to work with, for example, if your design has to work with a uh, image, uh, uh, has to work with a network uh, controller, uh, or you want to work with a um, camera module, so there has to be handshaking protocols performed uh, between your computational logic uh, and the um, logic that you use to operate or interface with the camera. Also, there are logics added for loop control and branch control. Occupancy. Occupancy um, defines uh, the, the utilization ratio of uh, the design of the circuit. We define data path occupancy as at any time on point, at a, time, at a point of time, the proportion of the data path that contains valid data. So if you look at this circuit, and uh, this is the same circuit operating at different uh, time um, moments. 
the very top um, um, time step here, we can see that, uh, well, first of all, this circuit uh, has several registers. And uh, this one of the register is uh, the valid register that will determine uh, whether the input data is valid or not. And we have three such logics, uh, such registers here, along with the uh, valid uh, control signal. And then we have uh, other regular combinational logic between these um, registers. So at the very beginning, that uh, when we look at at this time point, uh, this occupancy uh, will be a zero because um, none of these flags, uh, the valid flags, uh, is true. Uh, as a result, the data in the register is considered as invalid. So the computation, uh, even though will be performed anyway, but uh, the result is not useful. In the second uh, time point, we have the first flag uh, value uh, is set as true. So the data here, uh, 1B, is considered a valid data. As a result, the computation is going to be performed on this valid data. Uh, but everything else is invalid. So the occupancy is um, one third of the whole, uh, one third of the three registers, or three stages. And the next time point is similar, although uh, we have a valid flag uh, during the second stage. So this data here is valid. Uh, but everything else is still uh, invalid. So the occupancy is, again, one-third of the three stages to 33%. The final time point, uh, we are doing better uh, because now we have uh, two valid signals uh, you know, at this um, location here and this location here. So uh, in this case, the occupancy will be 66 two-thirds uh, of the uh, whole um, resources that we use in the circuit. The overall circuit occupancy is defined as the average occupancy over time from the program start to the end. So we're going to count in basically every cycle how these um, resources are being used, uh, whether they are valid or not. These unoccupied portions in the circuit are called bubbles. And um, the goal is to decrease the bubbles uh, as a result to increase the occupancy. And by minimizing the bubbles in the whole circuit, we essentially increase the Fmax.